All right. Hello and welcome to the GGG podcast. I'm Paul and I am joined once again by the illustrious Phil. He's illustrious this week. We're bringing illustrious back. And yeah. <laughs> we're ma- let's make illustrious again. Illustrious again. Okay. <laughs> um, we got a great uh, show for you. Some interesting stories uh, going around the interwebs. We're going to break it down and talk about it before. First, if you have not liked or subscribed to our podcast, please go ahead and give us a like or subscribe over on YouTube or Spotify or Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts or wherever you are. Uh, give us those likes. So without further ado, Phil, how are you doing? What have you been playing this week? What's been going on? I have been good and busy, and which is good, but also uh, I haven't had as much time to dive into Final Fantasy VII as I'd like. Um <gasps> God. Which is the game I've been playing, and we will talk about it more at the end of the show. Oh. But I'm also experiencing a new thing where I, I'm i feeling FOMO about not getting to play Helldivers as much as I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, the, social media the won't front, let you forget. <laughs> they will it won't let, let me forget. forget. I feel guilty that I'm not out here killing robots you because should. somebody's got to do it. Yeah, the war effort needs you. So oh, uh, They're going to get to Super Earth, and then what happens? Do they just delete the game? I don't know. Um, <laughs> you made me think about that for a second. <laughs> Damn, very depressing thought. Uh, <laughs> Paul, what have you been playing? What have you been up to, my friend? Um, lots of uh, you know, still a lot of Hell Divers. I've I've been playing a, a slightly less Hell Divers because I'm trying, I'm trying to gauge myself, try not to get sick of it. Um, mm-hmm. just uh, but I've been having a great time with that. Uh, doing the orders with friends. Um, been playing some more deep rock survivor, uh, which has been really fun. Just a great way to kill like 20 minutes or if you ever have like an awkward amount of time. Um, Mm. so I've been playing that as well. And then I have a confession to make Phil and, uh, uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, Uh so Starfield again. No, not that (laughs) bad. Worse. (laughs) Um, uh, so uh i as many of you know uh last week i talked about how i tried the eight hour trial for skull and bones oh no (laughs) and and this sunday i was playing it some more and i was getting close to the end of my eight hours and i was like ah i think i'm gonna buy this game (laughs) and i i bought Skull and Bones. God forgive me. Um, Was it on sale? Nope. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> so here's the thing is that mm. I I am I will never say that this is a great or even like a, a good game. Um, mm. But I have found like a lot of fun with just the chill vibe that it is. Uh, Mm -hmm. with like sailing on the seas like on sunday uh when i was playing the trial like caitlin was sitting on the couch i'm playing it on my uh ps5 and my girlfriend's sitting on the couch and uh like i'm like able to have a full conversation with her while Mm -hmm. playing the game uh and i know that that's not necessarily like a a goal when you're playing a video game but it it was just that kind of thing of like this is a game that doesn't require 100% of my attention cuz when i'm playing hell divers i'm like i can't talk right now i cannot yeah. do it <laughs> like i it can give you none of my focus uh so i i bought it so you're saying it's it's a good couple game for like <laughs> it's a game one of you is playing it's but. a game that if you're in voice chat or you can uh-huh. have a conversation while playing this game that isn't about the game. Uh, you and uh, I, I'm enjoying the vehicle combat. Everything that's not on the ship is awful. Mm. Uh, yeah. But the, I do believe that the ship combat. I believe that there's something there. It is mm. yes. It's pulled from Black Flag, but I, I'm having fun. I'm having fun with. Hey, it. So I think there's something to be said for they're doing a thing that nobody else is doing like kudos to them for finding a game that like literally doesn't exist in the form that it is yeah otherwise you know what i mean that's yeah that's pretty cool so i know so i know it's an unpopular opinion i'm gonna put out Mm. i drafted a a video uh today Mm. so I'm, i'm gonna put out a video explaining not why it's a good game 
but why I think it's not that bad. <laughs> so I'm going to be putting that out on our YouTube channel. Okay. So, so. I know that this is a this may be a loaded question. I know that you bought it at full price. I did. They just said, how much do you think is the price point that like your average person should should pull the trigger on this game? So my biggest problem with the game is I think it's overpriced. Mm. I think that this is this is a forty dollar game with mm. a with a battle pass at ten dollars. That's what it yeah. should be, uh, because that's the content that they're giving you, especially with like having only ship combat. It's a forty dollar yeah. game, and so the fact that it's seventy dollars is ridiculous. And like, I'm sorry, it cost you a lot of money, Ubisoft. Maybe you shouldn't have twenty thousand mm. studios across the planet all mm. working on it. <laughs> Because I can't tell. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that's the biggest problem. I think if this was a forty dollar release, people mm. would buy it, and it would yeah. be it would be a, a good game if it was a forty dollar release. But asking that triple A price point, is honestly, just, yeah, let's get that dialogue going. More, we need to uh, uh, normalize games coming out at different price points. Yeah, because not every game is a sixty seven dollar game. Not every game is a fifty dollar game. Yeah. It's okay. Especially like if you're, you know, we talk about games as a service every week now, and I hate it, but that's where the gaming industry is. And it's like, if you're a game as a service, do not launch at $70. That's not how it works. Like Mm -mm. you're trying to make money over time and you're getting greedy by trying to make your money up front. And it's like, you're not God of War. You're not (laughs) like, sorry. (laughs) Anyway. All right. (laughs) That's my confession. I got heated. Okay. Uh, you got to calm down. <laughs> but I can't calm down because the major release this week is WWE 2K24. Uh, I don't know if John Cena is in this one. I feel like he's most I mean, an actor now. <laughs> you know, they but. put out his interview for MK this week. So, like, oh, that's right. I feel like they were like, oh, we should, WWE's coming out. We should put out the John Cena interview. So. <laughs> that's pretty cool that's but uh i haven't played one of these since the n64 so uh i'm Darn. just happy to see that they're still going <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean this is this is like a, it's this is a cult like sports classic i feel like there's a lot of people who play wwe 2k hmm. like really so um i'm not really a wrestling fan i have some friends who are into wrestling and into you know that uh, <laughs> so, like, that culture. Hey, I, can, I think I it's a very it. cool thing. It's it's theater for sports bros. Like yes. that's really. Uh, I'm happy that that space is occupied by people because it is some of the most entertaining like live weekly theater that you can see. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, fans of WWE, um, I'm glad you're getting this game. I hope it's good. I haven't seen any early reviews for it. But aside from that, that's pretty much been the only big release this week, unless I'm forgetting something or there's some little teeny tiny indie game that we want to talk about. Probably not, though. Probably not. I mean, March uh, is cooling for a minute while we let all that January, February steam rise off of uh, our wallet because hot dang. So many big games last month. Indeed. Um, yeah, I guess we'll, let's let's get on down to the news corner of our show. Okay, yeah, get on down to that corner <laughs> of the news. To, come on down. All right, what's, <laughs> on, what's going on in the news, Phil? Well, I mean, this is near and dear to both of our hearts, but uh, Helldivers 2 has been having... Uh, again, this game is... Viral marketing is brilliant, but uh, XO45s are heading into the game soon. They said that they were releasing XO45s, which is mech suits, uh, right after launch, or soon after launch. Mm -hmm. And a a lot of people have been posting videos of, like, someone dropping into their team and having a mech suit, uh, and then, like, ordering one for the rest of the crew. Um, So it seems like they're kind of rolling it out maybe amongst testers or something. But I like the idea that it's kind of like started out as this rumor of like, oh, wait, have you seen mechs? Like, Mm -hmm. we're all sort of confused about it. Although I'm sure they will uh, fully announce when that releases because why not capitalize on this game's unyielding popularity? So so an interesting tidbit. So they they have said that there was going to be monthly updates. uh, Mm -hmm. And their next scheduled monthly, monthly update, I believe, is March 14th. 
Okay. Um, and so that would fall in line because now Arrowhead is actually like taking ownership of the mechs and mm. they are putting it out and publicizing the mechs as opposed to like leaked footage or tester footage or people mm. hacking into the game on you know, and getting and, those. Yeah. yeah. So, so presumably this will be coming March 14th. I'm more curious about what, the enemy response is going to be if we're going to see new enemy types and that's the reason that they're giving us mechs because if they're just giving us mechs to just kill the same enemies i mean i'm down for that but yeah it can't be it joel's got to be up to something else i so. think we're gonna have a minute where things are great we have mechs we're just decimating and then a new threat is going to arise probably from uh from the machine's but also possibly from the Terminators, a new type of bug or a new type of robot enemy. Or that's the Illuminate. Gonna, or the or Illuminate. The I mean, I here's my thing. I think they're saving them for like a little bit later down the line. I agree. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So. But I think a new enemy, like a just an enemy mob type that is good against machines would be pretty cool. Because I've also seen footage that a tank uh, type vehicle is mm -hmm. also on its way to Helldivers. Um, and... Again, it's something I definitely, when I've been running around the map, have said to my uh, fellow soldiers, oh, yeah, I want one of those. Like, I wish we had a car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think there's got to be a response to it because at the game's, like, current state, it feels like either a mech or a tank would be kind of OP. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I don't know. What's the highest difficulty you've done, Phil? Oh, well, I mean, I think I got up to uh, hard. But again, uh, my time has yes. been so limited. Of course, of course, yes, yes. yes. Sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway. But yeah, yeah. How do you feel about this? Are you excited? You ready? Oh, I'm su I'm super excited. I'm stoked mm -hmm. for more things to uh, you know be added to the game. Uh, you know, I'm excited that they've committed to like kind of a monthly update. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm excited. I I love this game. I love Hell Divers. I love the community. And, you know, it's really with the Galactic War, it's really established kind of this level of like nerdy D&D &D role playing um, that uh, people are really latching on to and myself included. Like mm -hmm. I, we, uh, when I play with my friends, we call each other by like our naval signs or. Very or cool. um, yeah. So like uh, my Team handle starts people. with a W. So, yeah, I'm whiskey. Um, uh -huh. oh. You know, uh, I got a friend who starts with a Z. So he's Zulu. Another guy, cool. A, Alpha, B, Bravo, O, Oscar, you know, like. Whoa. Yeah. So that's what, that's what we call each other when we're playing the game. So. Very, very good. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Man, I, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. I, I, little side note. Yes. I saw please. a video online of uh, someone pointing out that, like, the illegal broadcast mission, like, when you look at it, uh, it's talking about how. It's just saying stuff against Super Earth talk, and then you see like all of the scientists who've died there. It looks like they were shot and not like uh, ripped to shreds by bugs or something. Mm. Um, it's cute, you know, someone noticing a small detail in the game that we're all pretty aware of. But then all the comments were like, "Hey, what an interesting perspective!" I'm just gonna have uh, some patriot uh, patriot uh, patriot officers come by and have a talk with you, okay? Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> like everybody was calling it uh, propaganda. But it was uh, excellent. We've all That's bought awesome. in. We're all role playing. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to find out what the big secret is, <laughs> if there is a big secret to be revealed. Um, huh. So it's that, the secret is that we're heroes, is what it is. You're goddamn <laughs> right. Um, all right. So moving on, uh, Respawn Entertainment uh, recently had uh, a number of layoffs, uh, but we did get some positive news coming out of the studio. And that is that they are working on a new game in the Titanfall universe. But they specifically said it's not Titanfall 3. Interesting. Which is weird because yeah. when I think of the Titanfall universe, I think of Titans. So... Mm -hmm. Are there and Titans falling. in the game? <laughs> <laughs> like, how is it not Titanfall 3 other than Titanfall subtitle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. What... I mean, that... it would be, okay, there's a couple of things that I feel like it could be. Uh, mm. Technically, Apex Legends is kind of a Titanfall universe game. Mm. Uh, okay. And technically, the pieces of a Titan are in the game on one of the characters. I, I can't remember her name right now, but she used to be my main 
Uh, she like constructed pieces of her father's Titan uh, that was like destroyed in battle to give herself like a wingsuit. Okay. Very. Yeah. Very. A lot cool. of a lot of flavor in that game. Um, and I feel like respawn because they've been so focused on Apex Legends. They have not been able to really work on Titanfall 3, which after Titanfall 2, we were all hungry for. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, so, they, gave, they had an update for Titanfall 2, like, last fall, right? Am I yeah. correct in thinking that? Like, it, and that's an old game now. Like, that game's been out for a while. So, mm-hmm. like, on most, when I, that's, that's one of those games, like, when, when I'm going through a sale on Steam or PlayStation or Xbox or whatever, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's Titanfall 2 for $4.99. <laughs> with everything in it with everything it's good... the ultimate edition <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah i'm excited about this because i like i think apex legends is great i played my share of it but no game has really gotten mobility as well in my opinion as titanfall did yeah um playing as a titan was a lot of fun and like i i liked the the going back and forth of like being really tanky versus the incredible, like, you run, you jump off a wall, you wall run, you zip line, you, like, and taking down a Titan as a dude. Like, it, the game just had a lot of really unique things going for it. Uh, so, I hope whatever it is, is some is Titanfall 3 in spirit. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I hope so as well. Like, I really like Titanfall. Um, I like, you know, t- 2 is really, really great. Um, but I, I was just a fan of like, cause I know that they're the original creators of like call of duty and mm. like that, that's the, when those creators were working on call of duty, that's when, that's when I used to play call of duty. And mm-hmm. so uh, like a lot of their mechanics and things felt very, uh, familiar to me. And then, like you said, the movement was just so good. You could just fly around a map having that like, um, you know parkour kind of that mirror's edge but i have rocket packs so i can slide on a wall like prince of persia it was just Mm -hmm. very 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 cool i i would love titanfall 3 i'm sad that it's not titanfall 3 but i hope it's i whatever this game is i hope it's closer to titanfall than it is to apex legends even though it sounds like and i did not know this that they are in the same universe so yeah yeah uh so yeah Loosely, Man. loosely excited for that. I'll, I'll take a, a milieu of excitement uh, just <laughs> over the idea of robots falling from the sky. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, how about a world without robots or oh. AI or anything like that? How about a world made of sand? <laughs> you mean Nevada? Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Nevada. Nevada, Nevada Awakening. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, Dune Awakening uh, got a new trailer this week, and uh, it's a game that I had brought up, I think, uh, maybe a month or two ago. Um, mm-hmm. It's a survival crafting game. It's also They're also calling it an MMO, which yeah. has got my red flag bells. ears yeah. like up a little bit uh, because, you know, that's that's kind of what kind of uh, my whole problem with Skull and Bones is is trying to be an MMO. I'd rather not. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I'd rather you just make a good hey, game. <laughs> hey guys, historically, how have MMOs worked out? There's World of Warcraft, and yeah, that's about it, right? Mm-hmm. Remember the Matrix MMO? Remember the Matrix Online guys? I think Eve Online's still going. Uh, Guild Wars Two. Um, Guild Wars Two relies on weebs extensively though so well we'll get into the weebs later uh Ah. (laughs) for our main topic we'll be discussing weebs and what is a weeb (laughs) find out later um so yeah so anyway dune awakening it's a survival craft they're labeling it as an mmo it had a really exciting trailer obviously trying to get on that marketing train of Mm. um you know dune part two coming out this week uh I guess uh, the only thing I'm a little wary of, and this is something that I'm going to refer to as kind of the battlefield effect, mm-hmm. is the in the trailer they show you like oh, all the battles you can have and 
it, it just looks so organized. And that's kind of how they what they do with the battlefield trailers. Just like, look at this incredibly organized battle of mm-hmm. what possibly could happen when you play Battlefield. And it's like when I play Battlefield, that crap never happens. Yeah. <laughs> like, nothing is organized. Everyone's running around with their like a chicken with a head cut off. And mm-hmm. I feel like if you're making an MMO, I just don't know structurally what this game looks like. Um, how this game plays. Like, is it like V Rising where there's a set map? Um, I don't know. What, I mean, do you, what do you think, I w- Phil? I would love the idea of a server type, like, based game. Um, I was reading a little bit about some, like, statements about the game. And one of the things that the uh, one of the designers said is that the concept is new players arrive in a certain area. And there, he's like, I hope that at some point there's veterans who show up and, like, recruit from that area. With a I ship hope. and be like, hey, yeah, he's like join my army uh, with the promises of giving them water in the future and like making factions and armies that way. Um, again, sounds really cool, but I, I feel like it relies on a lot of people like really role playing in a way that I don't know that people will. Yeah, I you know, completely I feel, agree. Yeah, keep most keep MMOs just just turn into people like pop. I remember the first time I played World of Warcraft and I was like, this is going to be amazing. I'm like going to go into this world. I want to talk to people like my character, blah, 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 blah. And then like immediately I walked into a room and there was 30 people standing like in a six foot space uh, with all their names over their heads. And they're all being like level 45 acts, please. Like just <laughs> saying absolute nonsense. That was completely game breaking. And that's just what MMOs are unless you're playing in a role play server. Um, but it's tough to expect that everyone's going to be on board with that. Uh, which, I don't know. Even outside of that, the game looks really pretty. It looks like a fun crafter. Um, it's a future setting, so it probably won't be as intensive of like, alright, you got to chop... Well, you're not chopping down any trees. Well, that's Thank a good thing. <laughs> God, I am... Alright, not chopping down any trees for a while. Please, yeah. please, gaming industry. <laughs> I've had enough chopping of trees. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> The the visuals look very impressive though, and if yes. it keeps up that like aesthetic and gets a bunch of people in the game, that might make me play it just to see like how it all looks. The yeah. ooh factor is high. Yeah, the, the the presentation looks very nice. Um, very impressed with that. It, but yes, it's exactly we're we're worried about the same thing. It's it's organization. Mm. It's like how much control are you going to give the players? over this and like in hell divers we talk about role playing and we we talk about the galactic war and everything but the galactic war is largely controlled by you know the company and Mm. then we get to respond to it uh, by meeting the objectives or not we role play you know into being soldiers i'm i'm whiskey one you know Mm. like but I feel like with a survival crafting game, it's like you're giving players the ability to make build a base in that Mm. basin over there. And like once that spot's claimed, does that, you know, that spot's claimed. And like a problem that I had with playing V rising uh, on public servers is that, you know, the, the, the higher level people, the level eighties and everything, they would just come in and destroy you. They'd like take yeah. all your stuff or throw it away or just, you know, kill you repeatedly over and over again. And it's like it's then then the game becomes it's a, like a race to the top and then you just try to stay in power, which I guess is fun for people who are like really into PVP, but in those types of games, I like I feel like the winner is not the most skilled player. The winner is who has a hundred hours that they committed to yeah. this week to playing this game? Not Who's me? the most unemployed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so, so I, there is cause for concern there. And if that is how the game is, I, I hope that they let you do like private servers. Cause I think yeah. that's probably what I would want. And then maybe dip my toes into a public server. Uh, but they need they need to dole out more information. They're just not doing it. Also, I'm wondering about the lasso that Warner Brothers has over this game. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll see we'll see how that. Well, you unfolds. you can buy the Worm Rider pack uh, for 
fifteen ninety nine is a very reasonable price. Right. However, that only allows you to ride one worm, and when that worm dies, you got to buy a new pack. Yes, <laughs> and that worm is very old, and he has uh, many diseases, so he's going to die yeah. quickly. So, dude, imagine <laughs> if thumpers were something that you had to buy with real life money. <sighs> oh no! I said it out loud. You said Martin it out loud. Gonna it's going to happen. It. No. What did you do? <laughs> what did you David? do, David? David Zaslav, you listen to me right now. You don't do this. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's press on. Uh, speaking of, uh, I guess I should have put uh, the Call of Duty news next to the Respawn news, but uh, we're getting some Call of Duty Warzone news. Uh, I figured I'd throw it in because this is like some slightly nerdy Call of Duty Warzone news. Uh, they are adding another licensing deal uh, to their repertoire uh, with uh, Warhammer content. So now you can get Warhammer, like Space Marine armor, for your your COD uh, soldier. I don't understand the crossover here, other yeah. than like somebody in the office was like, "Did you guys hear that Henry Cavill is doing a Warhammer show?" Uh, <laughs> like. And they'd be like, oh, my God, Henry Cavill's a bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, let's... He plays games. Let's try to get him to play yeah. our game. <laughs> like, I don't get it. Um, uh, the the image for the, like, the crossover yeah. has, has different armors. But it's got one dude with a moto- mohawk and skin-tight Oakleys on. Like, you know, there's those wraparound glasses that are almost yeah. built into his head. Mm-hmm. It looks like he's about to film a video from the front seat of his car complaining about how uh, Dr. Seuss is uh, too woke or whatever. <laughs> 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 um, oh, that said, cool? Like, I, I, uh, unless it's gameplay, I really don't care about these types of crossovers, um, which is like... Maybe if I was a bigger fan, I would want to buy one of these skins. I, I, I guess for me, like, I think there is a difference between Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone. And the mm-hmm. difference with Fortnite is, like, there's events in Fortnite where there's, like, special quests or missions that if they're doing the Peter Griffin crossover, yeah, that's silly as hell. But mm-hmm. at least there's some sort of, like, level design or something that goes into It's not just a skin. And, yeah. And, and so... I, I just think this is this is lazy. Like I don't know, I, I I've I've been sometimes I I don't follow Doctor Disrespect, but you know he always like randomly pops up in my feed because I follow a lot of gaming stuff, and just like, he's getting sick of Call of Duty Warzone. Everybody's getting sick of Call of Duty Warzone. They all refuse to play anything else, uh, <laughs> and, and, and and but they did they just complain about the game the whole time, and it's like well you're gonna keep buying the content that they put out and. I, I don't see the crossover here with Warhammer nerds and Call of Duty. Maybe it's a, a niche that I just don't know that it exists, but mm. whatever. Well, it I guess there are some game modes coming along, like in the update for that are that are more related to Yeah, um, there are there are game modes. So that's that's something. But again, okay. Call of Duty is sort of such the game that it is that it feels like what can we really add here? I don't know. Well, so so what I'm reading uh, off a of GameSpot is is mm. that there's uh there's gonna be a big zombies update. Mm. But okay, like what does that have to do with the Warhammer skins? It's it's like yeah. we talked about like Destiny throwing in the Mass Effect skins, which mm. is like it's cool, but like what do you why? <laughs> You know, I wonder with a lot of these games if they're like, this is a kind of a this is kind of a walk. Stay with me here. Okay. Uh, when Magic the Gathering, like two years ago, released a Baldur's Gate set mm-hmm. that had characters from the game, uh, I believe that that is when Baldur's Gate was initially supposed to launch, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Hey, this is a great opportunity for a tie-over. Let's get it done." Um, and I think. Uh, sorry, then Baldur's Gate got delayed, but those cards still came out because the timeline for this big company that is Hasbro Magic the Gathering was like, we can't move that set later, so it's just going to come out when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe something's happening here. Maybe we we're supposed to get some sort of either thing about the show or the upcoming third-person game uh, around now, and that got delayed. Well, 
Uh, yeah, I, that's a that's a very valid point. I do know that like Space Marine was supposed to be released last year, but I don't know. The, from the moment they said that, I was like, that's never going to happen. <laughs> like, yeah, know the industry too well. <laughs> so it's supposed to be releasing it in September, and I think that's a reasonable uh, time frame for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. I I guess what I'm I'm not mad at COD specifically. I guess I'm more mad at just licensing for licensing's sake trying to get Mm -hmm. a a quick buck and to me it's i I also like i'm not a full warhammer nerd but just to stand up for some of my friends who are bigger warhammer nerds the idea that you as a normal person would be would put on oh this is like kind of space marine armor it's like the whole thing about space marine armor is that it's humongous that you're this walking hulk of a person you're not a normal trooper and seeing that the 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 picture of you know <laughs> what what'd you say <laughs> so, the, the, a dude in wraparound oakley's yeah <laughs> our skin tight oakley's o- captain oakley over here and like tr- i'm a space marine it's like no you're not you cosplaying <laughs> at a medium-sized city's comic-con so <laughs> anyway moving on I'm sassy today um Okay, that's Next. that's good. Yeah, take that's, it, that's take it, a, go. No, 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 you're good, you're good. Keep going. Go. Okay, I believe. In Next you. bit of news: Baldur's Gate three. Because we can't not talk about it every single week, it keeps wiggling its way into the news. So it's mm-hmm. getting a physical release on Xbox. How fun! Except it's four discs. <laughs> <laughs> it's four discs. Wait, wait, wait. It's Why? It's cool that we are back in 1996 where there's a new Final Fantasy VII game and uh, this Baldur's Gate 3 is coming out on four discs. What? It's, I, you know, like, okay, here's the thing. It's like, I, mm. I, I do need to check myself because I'm like, you know, you live in the United States, you, you have access to good internet, you can mm. buy pretty much all of your games digitally and you you don't have to wait very long for them to download. Like even Baldur's Gate, a huge game, is probably only going to take me like two to three hours to download, maybe. And mm-hmm. and even people with not fast internet, you can be like, well, I'll download it overnight while I sleep. Yeah. And but I do understand that there's people whose internet just is awful. And you live in certain parts of the world or even parts of the country where the internet's bad, and you you kind of rely on physical releases. I get that. But, like, I feel like the next time Baldur's Gate has an update, you gotta, you have to update the game anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you need an internet connection to do that. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> okay, yeah, here's, here's the argument I can make. Um, the game being on four discs means that it is not just what some games physically are, which is you pop it in and then it just is a license to download the game. <laughs> It's yeah. basically a key to play the game. Yep. So that means that the the game is actually on those discs, which is cool for a preservationist. Like, from that point of view, um, it is kind of weird to not own things to the degree that we do not own things. Yes, very true. So I'm happy for people who are, like, really about having their game libraries, like, fully having everything on there. Uh, I do think it's a bit silly, but I think that this game kind of deserves people, like, there's a lot of people who are going to want to collect this one, you know? Yeah. I guess, like, are we overdue for a new Blu-ray? Like, because it's starting to feel like it. And I understand that most things are digital, and that's probably why a new version of Blu-ray hasn't come out yet. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I mean, the Xbox Series X has a Blu-ray player in it. You know? Like, it's... And I might be wrong about this, because this is kind of old information... But from when Blu-rays came out, I believe that a Blu-ray could put like 60 gigabytes on a single disc, yeah. uh, which was crazy back in the day, uh, especially from upgrading from DVDs, um, which I think could only hold like eight gigs. Like Ten, maybe? Or yeah. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Um, so this screams to me, it's like, we need a new disc. Sony, get on it. You you yeah. designed all the discs before. Design another one. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's time for Xbox to make a, a, a to return with their HD DVDs. Do you remember those? I do remember those. They ain't doing it. <laughs> they ain't doing it. They ain't doing nothing. They got they got Sony branded Blu-ray players in their Xboxes. <laughs> so <laughs> do you want to know an interesting fact as to why Blu-ray uh, one and HD DVD did not? 
I didn't know I was watching Tropic Thunder, but yeah, uh, please, that's... please go on. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, the, uh, the adult film industry. Yep, <laughs> got behind Blu-ray, and that's. Uh, I guess that's where most DVD or disc sales happen nowadays. Yeah, and I guess the uh, I guess that industry is now all digital, so like we don't need to make a new disc. But, but no uh, new discs. Yeah, I think if you take out if you take out the S, they're make they're they're making on working on that technology, new <laughs> versions of Blu-ray discs without the S. I didn't get it. Uh, I, take it. Take take the S. Got a disc. Take DS at it. Uh, oh, oh, okay. okay. I got goodbye. It. Sorry. Just went right <laughs> I'm over I'm melting. It's, it's, <laughs> not, right it's not a good joke. <laughs> it's a bad joke, Paul. It's okay. It's Tuesday. It's all right. <laughs> no, nobody has to be funny on Tuesday. Uh, oh, so, thank God. Um, all right. So, I don't know. It's Releasing a game on four discs uh, is a bit ridiculous. But at the same time, I can remember a time where I bought games on four discs. Mm-hmm. They were CDs. But they were on four discs. Like, Dune came out this week. Dune Part 2 came out this week. One of the oldest RTSs I can remember playing is Emperor Battle for Dune. And Mm. that game had an install disc. And then it had three different discs, depending on what faction you you were playing as. And so whatever faction you were playing as, you had to put that disc into your computer. Uh, That's really cool. Like... It's happened before, people. It's a little silly it's happening in 2024, but, you know, you can get through it. Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, last bit of the news before we delve into our main Final Fantasy topic is oh. uh, Payday 3 uh, going to be updating, getting has been getting a lot of uh, quality of life updates, but now they're at the point where they are actually adding elements to the game. Most notably, uh, they are adding a new solo mode uh, for the game, uh, which is probably because there's not a lot of people online. <laughs> so, which is, which is what That's happens. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, oh. uh, I, I really, I enjoyed uh, Payday Two. Uh, mm. From everything I've seen of Payday Three, it just didn't live up to what I wanted it to be. Uh, mm. I really like I was on board for payday one payday one was a classic but I just feel like the game uh, hasn't really grown so I'm excited that they're continuing to support the game I think it's I think it's a game that you know really depends like um, uh, what's the what's the game that we uh, play together Phil is very popular I can't uh, remember it right uh, now. oh uh, the space game yeah the well, space spooky spooky game um, let's uh, lethal company lethal, lethal company. company so like lethal company or void crew or mm-hmm. uh the the pirate game on xbox sea of sea of thieves those are all games that are really fun but they're very dependent on people having a group of friends to play it with yeah. and when you don't have that um you know it creates a problem and with payday yeah. three having such a rough launch i feel like people weren't able to like convince their friends to get it so mm. people didn't buy it um any interest now that the game is getting a solo mode phil no not for give me like two years that i might get payday three when it's when everybody has stopped playing payday two and moved over yeah um i do i think there's something interesting like payday two was such a supported game for such a long time mm-hmm. uh and payday three just didn't seem like that much of a new iteration for a game that's gotten so much content, you know? Yeah. Um, story games, I totally get like God of War 1, God of War 2, or God of War Ragnarok. Uh, those are like the story is happening and that's what you want to see. There's not a lot of new gameplay stuff. There's some, but there's not a lot. Um, when it's a game that is mostly focused on gameplay and getting uh, like your party and everything together, you need more gameplay iteration than what Payday 3 seemed to have from Payday 2. And that's just from a thousand yard view. Um, Helldivers is a great example of a game that completely iterated and changed something from Helldivers 1 to Helldivers 2. And I think that's sort of the norm. If your game is more gameplay focused, you got to like change it in a big way. I agree. But yeah. yeah, I agree. Wholeheartedly agree. Payday 3, I hope you continue to push on, get better, um, but I'm probably going to be picking you up on a summer Steam sale at some point. Yep. That's, that's probably the most likely time I'm going to buy that. 
So, uh, you know, so yeah. keep Robin Banks, you guys. Keep Robin <laughs> Banks. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get into our main topic this week. So, huge release last week on Leap Year of all days, which uh, is kind of special, I guess. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came out. We mentioned it in one of the games that came out in our last uh, our last pod. Uh, but now um, people have gotten a chance to play it that, you know, people who aren't in the media, obviously. And so players have gotten their hands on it, still getting very highly reviewed. Uh, I've watched a lot of content on it. I downloaded the demo. I have not uh, played it yet. Uh, but Phil, you actually, you mentioned at the beginning of this episode that you got your hands on it, have had some time with it. What are your initial impressions? Um, you know, it's real good. It's very, very good. There, there is a, good. a big <laughs> got my seal of approval. I like. No, it's um, it's a big game for sure, and uh, I, I'm realizing that I kind of been scratching the surface, and I'm doing the thing in open world games that I uh, both enjoy and kind of dislike but also recognize it's because they built a good open world is I'm just going around and doing things that are not the main story because they are interesting leads to follow. Um, I I found a series of quests where you find some characters from the first game um, that are kind of like antagonists and they're very goofy and very funny. And I just followed them around the map for a solid like three hours of gameplay of just like finding them, beating them. And I will say the combat in that game for being like a turn-based RPG that is turned into an action game is surprisingly challenging. Like I'm constantly having to switch between characters and um, change up my tactics and like, okay, what is this person weak to? Let me hit them with this uh, to, to debuff them and stagger them. So there's a lot going on in the game, but I, I haven't felt the pull... Uh, for it like I do for most games. And maybe that's because I'm not so attached to the Final Fantasy legacy. So the that pull? is my what do you, review. What do you mean the pull? Like, I haven't uh, uh, shirked a bunch of responsibilities or like made every moment that I could. Like, well, you know what? I can sneak in half an hour right now and like uh, play. Yes. Um, the, the When you're lying in bed and you're thinking about the game. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the hell, I'm not hell diving right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> The Terminants, man. What, what are they doing right now? <laughs> um, so, so it's, I don't know. And it's different because it's like a big, massive RPG. So it's a different type of game. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think there are a couple things that like drag it down for me. And it just like slightly makes it not exactly my type of game. But I am going to finish it. Like I, I feel the need to like want to see what happens to these characters. They do a really good job of fleshing them out. So... Um, okay. Uh, what's your history with Final Fantasy and like Final Fantasy VII in particular? Um, so I, uh, I have a I have a, a very close friend who, uh, very into Final Fantasy uh, VII, particularly. He grew up with it. Uh, obviously, probably the best Final Fantasy game. Um, and so I'm familiar with it, and and I've played I've played a bunch of random Final Fantasy games. Um, I, when I, I remember when I was a teenager, like I had a PSP and I played a bunch of Final Fantasy games that came out for that. Um, but I never really understood at all what was going on at Mm. any point in time. Like, like, I just didn't get the story. I didn't know what I knew some of the characters names and some Mm. of their relationships. And so I focused on that. Uh, but the overarching story of Final Fantasy is, is lost upon me. And I think, I think even the most hardcore Final Fantasy fans, even though they understand Final Fantasies and all of the different stories in Final Fantasy, they would themselves acknowledge that it's confusing as hell. Um, And that's just how those games are. Um, So, but I was very, I guess I was hopeful because uh, for the first part of this game, for Final Fantasy VII Part I, uh, (laughs) um, it looked like a true remake remake of a game as opposed to just another remaster and a mm. full remake of something. I can support that where they fully fleshed out like areas of the game that they were obviously restricted to because of technical limitations at the time and, mm. and stuff like that. So I'm, you know, looking at uh, the remake and now rebirth, 
I think that like visually they're stunning. I think all of the new Final Fantasy games have been absolutely stunning. Um, but for me, and this is you know part of us coming from the entertainment industry, uh, I'll speak for myself, I should say, but like part of me coming from the entertainment industry, I can't get over the melodrama that's in all of the scenes. Mm. And again, I think even a really, you know, like hardcore Final Fantasy fan has to acknowledge it's very melodramatic. And that's not to say that it's bad, but it is a style and it's not mm. a style that I like. So <laughs> um, that being said, I think... Um, Similarly, when you're playing Final Fantasy, I think it really gives players the sensation of like being in an anime and mm-hmm. like fighting battles in an anime. Uh, kind of not not quite. I think like Elden Ring, I think kind of does that a little bit, but not. It's not quite anime, and I feel like Final Fantasy is. Uh, it's yeah. kind of like um, I talk about how uh, Zelda. Uh, and that style of, of game is kind of like playing a Studio Ghibli movie. Uh, yeah. Something like that. A Miyazaki film. And, and so I think like my my girlfriend, is she's very into Studio Ghibli. She's very into Zelda. And I was like, I totally see the connection there. And, mm. you know, you, you brought up weebs. It's like I see the connection between people who watch anime all the time and people who mm. are in the Final Fantasy because there's a similar vibe going on and you're getting mm. to interact with it. So that's I, my I point of view. <laughs> I agree with you. It's, you know, when you played Monster Hunter... That kind mm. of has a little bit of anime vibes, Absolutely. but it's mostly when the palicos are cooking your food. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then you go out and you're like doing this gritty fight. Gr- granted, you're doing some cool like anime fighting stuff, but you're doing a gritty fight with a beast. Right. Uh, I feel like Final Fantasy is a lot like the palico scene just over everything. Like... There is a sequence where you go to get a chocobo, which is like the cool yellow bird you ride on. And again, I think very visually stimulating and like yeah. entertaining. Very um, But the chocobo handles like a tank, sort of. And oh. uh, <laughs> the, the character, this is, this is just a real personal pet peeve, but the characters just kind of handle really clumsily when they're out in the world. Hmm. Um there is a very Sounds specific like timing months. for the. It does. <laughs> There's a very specific timing to dodging in the fights, um, that feels like unnatural, and you really have to like. It it feels like it is more turn based than it's willing to let you see, because it looks very like high action or whatever. But you really do have to like. Okay, I can get two hits and then I have to dodge. There's absolutely no wiggle room because once it starts its animation, if I'm in a certain range, I just get hit. Mm-hmm. Um. So are so, yeah. you? Like, because I know that they've transitioned, and this is not the first game that they've done this in, but they've they've transitioned between you know the turn based RPG to trying to do like this kind of hybrid, like, and I think when they first did it, like I think the gaming community in general responded positively uh, Mm because they like this is a good step forward. Do you think that it's still in a place where you feel like the combat is satisfying um, with this kind of hybrid combat? Yeah, it is it is all very challenging and very strategic, I okay. will say. Um, I Maybe I've taken a few fights that were like out of where my character should have been, but there was a lot of times where I was like using every last healing potion I had and like doing everything that I could to like pull out of a win on this fight. And then once I figured out like the key, I was like, oh, okay, this this is a lot easier than I thought. But it really does challenge you to figure out like exactly how to take something down. Sure. Uh, okay. So... Yeah, I, I, it's it's challenging, or it's it's very uh, it's not visceral, but it is very gratifying in a, a way that you don't commonly experience anymore. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah like I was watching it, and um, I, it kind of reminded me of the Guardians of the Galaxy game, um, mm. and like that's you know like I'm, Guardians of the Galaxy stole stuff from Final Final Fantasy. I'm not saying it's the other way around, um, <laughs> but. Uh, like, it kind of reminded me of that, of, like, um, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy game is a little bit more focused on combat, but it had a lot to do with, you know, ordering your um, your allies to do things. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I really enjoyed the combat in that game, although it kind of starts a little uh, basic and slow. Um, but it gets it gets really. I I really like that game. I gotta say, yeah. it's a great game. <laughs> that was a that was truly a wonderful game. Yeah. Like for totally a overlooked player, like, and overshadowed. Like yeah. If Suicide Squad had been as good as Guardians of the Galaxy, we'd be having like a whole. We'd be in a whole different place right now, um, just because I feel like Square Enix and Marvel kind of like sl- let Guardians of the Galaxy slide out and didn't really do much with it. Yeah, um, they should have put a little bit more into that game, and I, like I feel like a Fantastic Four game would be great by that studio. But anyway, yeah, less about. But that. also, it's yeah. like you know what? You can make a good game, not do games as a service, and just mm. leave it be. Like yeah. That's fine too. I had a great time at that game. Very, very well done. So, um, yeah. All right. So let's we're going to continue to talk about Final Fantasy a little bit, but moving off of specifically Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, um, you know, something we talk a lot about on this podcast is just how we get sick of seeing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, mm. Like I've complained about Halo a lot. Uh, and uh, how they've, you know, kind of they they push out the same game over and over again and they expect it to be a banger over and over again and they're not coming up with any new ideas. Uh, But at the same time, you have franchises like Final Fantasy that have been around forever and obviously it's a little bit different uh, because not all the universes aren't connected necessarily uh, Mm -hmm. because they're all their own, you know, story. Uh, But I've just... Why do you think Final Fantasy has lasted so long? Why hasn't it been some sort of franchise or just brand that has just died out? Why do you think they're still around today as they were in the 90s? Um, I mean, I, I'm kind of new to the Final Fantasy uh, tube myself. Like, I think I started playing on PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. But what I can say is their characters are very strong. I think from every game... Uh, in the mainline series, there is someone that you can point to and be like, I remember this guy's name. I remember this person's name. Like, a Final Fantasy VII specifically just has so many characters that are, like, memorable. And I think for a lot of people, there's a lot of nostalgia mixed up in it. But it's not, like... It's not cheap nostalgia. It is, like, these characters have been fleshed out for so many years since the original game came out. And I think that is a, a big part of it. The Final Fantasy games, for the most part, also don't like you, you won't see Cloud in seven and then eight. Right. They're um, they're all in like their own little multiverses, and they're all fairy tales kind of being told to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that the the character work across the games is really what brings people back to them. Like the stories, while convoluted and crazy, kind of touch something in all of us. It's like, oh, I care about Aerith. I care about cloud i care about noctis like there's so yeah and i I think like you said earlier the characters and i think you said like the living in an anime is Mm -hmm. a part of it for sure right 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 right. Uh, 16 did something interesting where they kind of like turned their they wanted to go more game of thronesy with it Mm -hmm. and i feel like they accomplished that to an extent um but yeah yeah tough to say but I think it's the I think it's characters because the uh, memorable villains also in each of them uh, Sephiroth being like almost world famous he's in Smash Brothers yeah <laughs> Which... well I guess like um, do you I mean it could be like a cultural thing too like you see a bunch of games that come out of uh, you know like Japan and it's like like we just got another Tekken we just got another Street Fighter these are these are games now you know. That being said, you know, we just got Mortal Kombat 12. Like, Mm -hmm. like, so, like, there are games that have franchises and brands that have stood the test of time. And I I will say with Final Fantasy, like, they have a great formula. Because, like you said, all of the stories are separated. They're not connected. They're not building on each other. They're not using the same characters over and over again. I would argue that their heroes tend to be very similar throughout the Mm. Final Fantasy universes. They seem to be different versions of the similar character. Uh, So Mm. (laughs) uh, I'll say that. (laughs) But Mm. I think they've kind of masked... They have this perfect, like, branding situation where it's like... Like, I I feel like in gaming and in uh, movies and TV and entertainment right now, 
studios they do not want to make a new thing because they're so afraid that they make a new thing it's not going to succeed on the market because nobody knows what the heck it is and so that's why we're getting the dune remake that's why we have a lord of the rings amazon show is because they have to they are only committed to known quantities and with final fantasy it's like you can put final fantasy on the title of a thing you know generally what it is but you can do your own complete story that is not held back by what happened before or expectations or anything like that. And so it's kind of like business wise, it's, it's really ideal. I think yeah. um, where they can just stick final fantasy on there, new game, <laughs> you know, and it's, we're not doing this. It's not halo infinite where we're continuing the story sort of, you know? Uh, so I have to, I have to give them a lot of credit for that. A lot, a lot. Of I mean, that's, that that point is very well realized when you look at Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within, the film that came out in 2001 uh, that has seemingly nothing to do with anything else related to Final <laughs> Fantasy. Um, I, I think there's also something interesting about uh, Final Fantasy VII in particular that has been like, they've released Crisis Core, Advent Children, a lot of like PSP games that were all tied in that universe. Mm-hmm. Um and I kind of wonder what it is that really stuck with people in that, uh, that made people so connected to that franchise that they keep revisiting this well in particular. I don't know. I think, I think it's the anime thing. I don't know. Mm. We need, all right, for any weebs out there, we need you to come on yeah. and you got to explain Tell this to us. us. All right. Cause yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I have a friend who's in love with Final Fantasy, and I really need to. I'm gonna have a, a little interview with him and see what yeah. we can get out of him. Yeah, do like a. But. We'll do a side, a little side interview. That that would be yeah. great because I need to be told. Someone educate me. <laughs> because yeah, well, we get, there's ahead. there's Tifa Lockhart Lockhart in a um a bikini that has gotten most men on the internet uh, engaged in the game. So ah ah yes. <laughs> so weebs again. It's yeah. weebs. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> well, for all, for everybody out there who enjoys Final Fantasy, I'm glad that you got this game. I'm glad that it's getting good reviews and that most people seem to be enjoying it. Um, mm. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for us for this week, Phil. We are running out of time here quickly. Um, so any more, any more little gaming tidbits, any more, uh, crumblies at the bottom of the bag uh, there, the, the game, the thaumaturge, uh, arrived. It's the a little thaumaturge. indie. Yeah. It's an indie Metroidvania and it looks like a, uh, hallucinogenic trip. Um, oh yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I feel like it's been popular among some YouTubers that I like to like that, ups- that recommend obscure games, uh, that was something that I forgot to add earlier. But if you like Metroidvanias and really like alternate twists on them, it's probably something you want to check out. Uh, it's gotten kind of like middle of the road reviews. I think it's at a seventy-two percent average. Hmm. But yeah, if if uh, if you are a Metroidvania person like I am, I would say give it a give it a squeeze. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, yeah, I Metroid, huge fan base right there. So, okay. Well, we are going to wrap it up for this week. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for uh, I, I, I said the wrong title. I'm so sorry. It's called okay. Ultros. I was looking at the wrong review thread. Okay. U L T R O S. Ultros. All right. Okay. Well, did that just come up? Uh, yes. All right. Well, when I when we uh, when we post this pod, I will put it uh, in the description. Uh, for anybody uh, looking to check out that game. Uh, But yes, as I was saying, we are out uh, for this week. If you enjoyed our podcast, uh, first of all, thank you for listening to the entire thing and hearing my voice right now at the end of this episode. Uh, So please uh, give us a like and subscribe. Still trying to get to 300 subscribers over on YouTube. Uh, So give us a subscribe over there. And uh, yeah, hope you have a great gaming week and weekend. And we will be back next week. Peace. Peace.